You may be able to go to work, you may be able to go out to the grocery store and go for a drive and even step outside to get some fresh air or even go to a dinner with friends and think about it, that entire time you're doing those things, your loved one is dealing with symptoms almost 24-7. A lot of times, I'm not saying in all cases, but a lot of times there's rarely a window of time where they don't feel symptoms. So just think about the last three months or six months or 12 months or however long your loved one has been dealing with symptoms for, that entire time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're feeling symptoms. How's it going Thriver? Miguel here from CFS Recovery. In this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. Normally, I'm speaking to people on my channel who are dealing with CFS and dealing with long COVID, fibromyalgia, and people who are actually going through it themselves, but we've gotten a lot of requests from people who asked if I could make a video about people's support systems, for people's family members, or brothers or sisters, or for people to understand what you're actually going through if you are dealing with this. So this video is specifically intended for relatives, for friends, family members of someone who's going through CFS or ME or long COVID. So that is the person I'm gonna be speaking to in this video. Now, I've had this conversation many, many times with different people I've worked with because of course, when I'm working with an individual who's actually going through this, there's a whole lot of different things that don't need to be said. For example, when someone tells me that they're flaring up, they don't need to tell me their symptoms for me to know the whole experience that they're having. You know, when someone tells me that they're bedridden, I know what that means. They don't need to tell me that they can't walk or they can't go take showers regularly or that they have difficulty getting outside that sometimes they need to get spoon fed. I know those things. So as somebody who's gone through this recovery journey myself, I know how difficult it can be to communicate what I was going through to other people. And even to this day, I am fully recovered. At my worst, I was completely bedridden, housebound. I was in the hospital for two months and couldn't move sometimes. I had to get spoon fed. I, I was so sick that they were actually giving me blood thinners because I wasn't walking around for such a long time. So. I know what it's like to be in the trenches of this, and I've worked my way up from that point. I had to go learn how to use a wheelchair, then use a walker, then use my own two feet, then get back out into the world again and rebuild my life from scratch. And today I can exercise, I can travel, I can work full time, actually more than full time. So I've been on the entire journey and still, even with the people who have watched me on this journey, even my family members, they still don't understand fully what's going on. So. I'm gonna to try to explain this as best as I can so that way you can understand what your loved one or your friend or your relative is going through. So that way, instead of hearing it from them all day, you can hear from somebody else who has been through it, but also someone who has worked with literally hundreds of people all around the world and helped them have full recoveries. And you can actually watch all of those videos in this playlist up here. Number one, I want you to understand that this individual, you know, your loved one who's dealing with these symptoms, they are not lazy. Even though it may look like it from the outside, if someone's lying in bed all day or lying on the couch all day and not really moving around and they look unproductive, just understand that that's not coming from a place of laziness. That's coming from a place of, you know, a lot of different emotions. One of them, obviously it's fear because they don't want to accidentally do a little bit too much because the difference between them having a decent day and them being stuck in bed all day can just be taking a few more steps, can be going to the washroom a few more times a day. At that extreme level, that's what that can do. So understand that they're not being lazy. What they are is very productive on the inside, or at least trying to be productive, maybe not on the outside physically, but they are fighting a mental battle every single day. They're dealing with you know, frustration, fear. So let's talk about emotions. They're dealing with fear because they don't want to mess up yet again and pay the price of having a flare up just from doing the simple basic things like taking a shower. So the fear is there of making things worse than it already is because it's unpredictable. Two, it's the frustration because they've likely, and maybe you've actually driven them to some of their appointments. They've gone to medical scans, medical tests. They've had blood tests. They've talked to all these different doctors and the doctors are just saying, well, you know, everything's coming back perfectly normal. You should be normal. 
And there's a lot of frustration when, when they hear that because this person, this is their life on the line. You may be able to go to work, you may be able to go out to the grocery store and go for a drive and even step outside to get some fresh air or even go to a dinner with friends and think about it, that entire time you're doing those things, your loved one is dealing with symptoms almost 24 seven. A lot of times, I'm not saying in all cases, but a lot of times there's rarely a window of time where they don't feel symptoms. So just think about the last three months or six months or 12 months or however long your loved one has been dealing with symptoms for, that entire time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, they're feeling symptoms. So just think about the last time you had a headache or you got sick with the flu or something. Imagine all the symptoms and pain you felt. Imagine that, but that has been going on nonstop for the last X amount of months or years. So there's a lot of emotions. Like I said, there's the fear, there's the frustration, there's the uncertainty of what happens next. There's even like the loss of hope because if they've been on this journey for a while, I mean, you've seen them get their hopes up thinking that, hey, this might be something that works. Maybe this is the answer. Maybe this supplement is gonna solve it. Maybe this medication, maybe they've spent a lot of money on a lot of treatments. Maybe you've spent a lot of money for them, trying to help them, yet nothing's working, which is why you're watching this video right now. So understand that they're not lazy. They're, they're trying everything they can every single day to get better. At least the people who are watching these kind of videos, who are going out of their way, putting in the hours to listen to these things and look for solutions, it's almost like working a full-time job. In fact, I work 50, 60, maybe 70 hours some of the weeks trying to run this organization called CFS Recovery. It wasn't always like that. Prior to that, I was running a video production company. And prior to that, I was learning to walk on my own two feet again. So six years ago, I was just getting out of the hospital and a lot has happened since then. So I know what it's like to, to build a business, to, to run a business, to have employees, to, to have a million different things on my plate. Recovering was harder than what I'm doing right now. I was busier during recovery than I am right now, in a sense, because it was more than a full-time job. Every second of every day, you're trying to, to beat this thing. And the mission never really ends during that period of time when you are trying to recover from this. There are no days off when you're, you're trying to recover. At least that's how your loved one can perceive it. Can't take any days off if you even try to cruise control and you're at a severe level and you don't really have a plan in place, it can feel like walking across a minefield. They're terrified they take one wrong step and they landslide and crash and go back to square one. So that's number one is they're not lazy even though they look like it. They're actually trying very hard. Number two is you also want to give them space. Uh, and I think there's a balance to this because of course you want to help them. As somebody who's watching a loved one go through something like this, it can be very difficult because you want to do everything you can to help them. But a lot of times it feels like your hands are tied because what more can you do? You can bring them to doctor's appointments. You can buy them healthy food. You can even help them brush their teeth. But if you haven't experienced this yourself or haven't helped anybody get through this, sometimes the best advice you could give is say, hey, just hang in there. You got this. Just keep on going, you're gonna get better. But that doesn't really help the situation sometimes to the degree that they need help, right? Sometimes they need actual actionable steps. So it's very difficult for someone on the outside. I mean, I think to my loved ones who were by me, there was only so much they could do because they simply did not have the answers. It's as simple as that. But you also wanna give this individual space. You don't wanna check in with them multiple times a day and ask, hey, how are you feeling? Hey, are you feeling better? Hey, how are you compared to last week? Because most of the time, they're not gonna be feeling great. They're gonna be feeling symptoms almost 24 seven. So you constantly asking the question of, hey, how are you feeling? How are you doing? You feeling okay? They're likely gonna reply with, I feel like crap. Or, I, I don't feel good. They're gonna have symptoms. A lot of times they're gonna say, yeah, I feel okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Because they don't even have the energy to explain the symptoms that they're feeling. But they're not really gonna tell you that because Oh, you're trying to help them. So you want to give them space. Don't check in with them every single day to see how they're feeling. Don't check in to compare them to where they were two weeks ago or a month ago, right? We don't want to get into that comparison game. What we want to do is just be as present as possible. Don't think about the future. Don't think about the past. Just talk to them as a normal person. Help them as much as you can. And also understand that sometimes they can be snappy because they're dealing with a million different symptoms. They're dealing with a lot of this pent up frustration and they don't have a lot of contact with the outside world. So you are in a sense, their bridge to the world. 
sometimes the only interaction they have or one of the very few interactions that they have in person with people. So sometimes they can let out that frustration and they can almost vent to you or snap at you. But please try your best not to take it personally. I remember there were so many times where my grandma would be bringing me food, but I was in so much pain and I just have migraines and her opening the door and that sound happening it would just irritate me. But it wasn't her fault. Just like it's not your fault sometimes or most of the time because you are helping. So don't take it personally if they are talking in a different tone or maybe there, there's an attitude because it's not you for the most part. It is the symptoms that they're just pissed at. You know, they're very angry at, they're frustrated and there's just no outlet for them. For me, I was able to go to the gym whenever I got frustrated prior to getting all of this, but I didn't have an outlet. I couldn't even listen to music. I couldn't even draw sometimes. So I could talk a little bit and sometimes it would come out wrong. But give them space, right? Don't check in with them every single day. The best you can do, sometimes even your presence is helpful. And just having you around without saying anything, that means so much to someone who's going through this. And lastly, I wanna give you a third tip here is as they're watching channels like this, as they're watching recovery stories, as they're learning what to do in order to recover, it would also be helpful for you to also watch this channel to learn these principles so that way you can bring up these ideas. A lot of the times with the people we work with, we actually get their families directly involved. So during the group coaching calls, during the one-on-one -on -one calls especially, when we're creating these personalized plans for people, because that's what we specialize in, is figuring out what are someone's symptoms, what is their history, what is their activity levels, what are their roadblocks, are you on medication, what different things have you tried. We take all of these things into factor to create a personalized plan so people know exactly what to do in order to progress without hitting any plateaus through their personalized plan. So we have family members very involved, but you know, even if someone isn't inside one of our programs or working directly with our team, you can watch these videos. And a lot of times what we recommend to family members or loved ones or their recovery team, we call it, is reminding them, hey, how are you responding to symptoms? Hey, this is just an adjustment period. Because a lot of times people will say, I'm crashing, I'm crashing. And that's the worst thing you can call um, a flare up. It's actually an adjustment period. And actually you can watch a video up here if you do wanna lend more of a helping hand and understand these principles better so you can actually help and you can actually be in line with your loved one's approach. But this video up here explains the difference between a crash and an adjustment period. A lot of times we have the family members or support systems say, hey, remember this is just an adjustment period. It's not a crash, it's a flare up. It's all about how you respond to the symptoms and that in itself is a part of brain retraining. So learning these principles, understanding the solution and the roadmap out is gonna be very helpful because when they start going off track, you can spot these things and you're gonna know what to say and really how recovery works in order to get them back on track. So we actually have a resource, it's called the Recovery Science Blueprint, which pretty much breaks down what's going on and why the individual is feeling these symptoms, how this even happened, and also what's the way out. So I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description. It's called the Recovery Science Blueprint. It's basically the blueprint to go from surviving to thriving. And if you get familiar with that, perhaps you can even explain to your family member how these principles work. But if they already know that, then you can help reinforce it when the wheels start getting shaky on the way to recovery. So, I mean, there's so many things you could do as somebody who is helping your loved one recover. And just know that you have a very difficult, challenging job. You know, it's a challenging job, but I think these situations also bring you closer to the individual. It brought my family closer for sure. Brought me closer to a lot of different friends. And really, you see how close you can really be. There's not a lot of times where you spend this much time with somebody and they're off their phone and you're actually talking to them about deep things. There are a lot of times where I would talk to my dad and my friends about all the things I'd wanna do when I get better. And all the things I'd done in the past that I'm now super grateful for that I probably took for granted. So this is a time to really get close to them and bond with them and see them for who they are without the labels, without the job title, without all these other surface level things, you get to see the real them where they're almost stripped of this identity that they've been carrying around with them. But ultimately you play a huge role in their recovery. You can definitely be a catalyst or you could also be a roadblock for their recovery. Of course, you're doing the best you can with what you have. You don't learn this in a book. You can't learn this in theory. You have to learn through other people's experiences and that's why I put out these videos to help people like you and 
the people suffering with this mainly to come out of this and get their lives back and move on to the next chapter in their life. We can only be so much of a resource for these free YouTube videos. Obviously we have our programs where you know there's group coaching, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, but really we're able to create a structured, predictable, proven plan for somebody. We've worked with hundreds of people all around the world. We have so many recovery stories that go in depth that show people who were very severe, bedridden, hospitalized, debilitated, now they're thriving. Now they're living their best life. They're traveling, they're working. And so if you did need some extra help in guiding your loved one to recovery, uh, and you wanted some extra hands on deck, you wanted some help from people who do this for a living and, and do this every day, and like this is what we specialize in. If you wanted that extra help, you can click the link down below. You can apply for the individual. If they want the extra help, of course, because they have to be all the way in for this to work. If you did wanna explore that option, click the link down below. You can apply to our program and see if, if they're a good fit for the program. And if they are, we would love to help them get to thriving health and we can figure out which solution works best. So I hope this helps. I hope this provides some insight on the situation. It's not the easiest situation, but there are definitely things you could do to help this person get to thriving health. I would highly recommend to go through the YouTube channel and watch our most popular videos because those are the things that have helped people the most. And perhaps in you understanding what's going on, it's going to help you help your loved one get better a whole lot faster. Again, my name is Miguel, founder of CFS Recovery. We have a tagline here that you are just one mind shift away from living a life with thriving health because that's exactly what we teach. People are just one mind shift away, one light bulb moment away going from surviving where they are right now to thriving health. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. I'd say that CFS Recovery is absolutely the real deal. I actually felt like somebody had an answer, like somebody explained what was going on and it all clicked.